Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Happy winter solstice, December 21st, the shortest day of the year here in the Northern Hemisphere and the first day of astronomical winter. Well, it's near solar noon here, about 39 degrees. We had some fog around this morning, still overcast skies. And we do have some lingering snow around me here. You can see that fell about five days ago. And while my south facing panels are clear, my west facing panels still have snow. Flipping around here, you can see that we do have high overcast. And despite the overcast skies, our solar panels are producing. So although you may expect the lowest solar production here on the shortest day of the year, I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper into this for you. Let's take a closer look at the winter solstice. We'll take a look at the solar angle for this shortest day of the year, the length of daylight, and my solar production numbers. Okay, let's have a winter solstice refresher here. So during the winter solstice, the sun's rays directly hit the Tropic of Capricorn here. You can see on the map, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun by 23.5 degrees off axis. They're south here in the southern hemisphere, they are seeing the middle of summer. And here in 2020, the winter solstice occurred on December 21st. Next, I want to share with you a NOAA full disk satellite image from the winter solstice here. What's really cool about this image is at the beginning of the loop, we'll see the terminator here, which is the divider between daylight and nighttime, move from east to west across the continental United States. And then we'll see the other side of the terminator here coming in from the east as sunset approaches the eastern continental United States. Take a look at the loop again and you'll notice that the pole, the North Pole, and much of the Arctic Circle are completely in darkness. They do not see any sunlight this time of year. Another cool feature is the addition of the Global Lightning Mapper overlaid with the satellite imagery. We can see, looking at the Northern Hemisphere, look at the lack of lightning activity because we are at the start of winter here in the northern hemisphere, just some thunderstorms that are moving off the east coast. While if you look at the southern hemisphere, we have widespread thunderstorms breaking out over much of the northern half of South America. Now I want to show you the NOAA solar calculator. It's a really neat tool to find sunrise, sunset, solar noon, and solar position for any place on Earth. You can find that at esrl.noaa.gov forward slash gmd forward slash grad forward slash solcalc forward slash i have the rough location of where my house is located here in central maryland and this green line indicates where sunrise occurs on the winter solstice the pink line indicates solar noon on the winter solstice and the red line indicates the sunset position on winter solstice as the sun rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest. Solar noon on December 21st is at 12.07 p.m. in 10 seconds, and at solar noon, the highest position of the sun in the sky is only 27.4 degrees above the horizon. That azimuth for solar noon is always going to be 180 degrees due south. Apparent sunrise is at 7.25 a.m. sunset at 4.49 p.m. and that's only about 9.5 hours of daylight. Let's compare that to the summer solstice. So on the summer solstice you can see that the sun rises actually to the northeast, sets to the northwest, and we have sunlight across a larger chunk of the southern sky. The green line indicating the sunrise again, the red line indicating the sunset, and we are expecting the summer solstice to occur on the 20th of June 2021, and on that day solar noon occurs at 1.10 p.m. in 29 seconds. Sunrise on that day is quite early, 5.43 a.m., and the sun doesn't set until 8.38 p.m. Man, I'm actually looking forward to those longer days coming around, about 15 hours of daylight. And the sun angle at solar noon is an incredible 74.25 degrees above the horizon. I'm pulling up this protractor again. I showed this in my previous shading video where I compared 
my solar production between July 14th, 2020 and November 29th, 2020, basically my summer production with my fall production. Check out that video linked above here if you haven't seen it. And same protractor here, all I did was I added on our summer solstice sun elevation of 74 degrees here. We're expecting that on June 20th of 2021. And I added on our winter solstice sun elevation, only 27 degrees above the horizon. And it's quite a significant change to have the peak sun elevation in the winter less than 30 degrees. And in the summertime here, the peak sun is well over 70 degrees above the horizon. And I'll just reiterate the fact that here in the cooler months of the year that that lower sun angle could cause some production issues with you due to shading. Uh, where sunlight is filtered through some of the taller trees that may be in front of or near your panels. All right, it's about three hours later here. We're just shy of one hour before sunset. The sun, you can see, finally made its appearance here in the afternoon. We now have a broken deck of clouds, broken to partly cloudy here uh, near 3.30 in the afternoon. Sunset expected to be 4.30 uh, currently. The sun right now here is only 12 degrees above the horizon. So very, very low sun angle, as you would expect here on the winter solstice, lowest of the year, uh, sinking back down. Good news is though, that I'm glad we were able to break out of the completely overcast skies. And you can see here that we are still producing here at one kilowatt. All right, let's take a look at the total production for the day now. Here's my Tesla solar data that occurred on the winter solstice. Again, I have a 7.56 kilowatt system. And here on the left side of the screen, I have two screen captures from my Tesla app. You can see here the furthest one on the left is a really nice data display graph showing my solar energy produced in yellow. My home usage is in blue, the early morning through the middle of the day and into the evening hours and in gray. What's plotted is solar energy drawn from the grid and pushed to the grid. So in the overnight hours when we're not producing solar, all the energy that powers our home is drawn from the grid. And those are generally credits from the energy that we previously had pushed into the grid. During the daylight hours, whatever we produce and don't use directly in our house is pushed back to the grid. And those are these negative numbers here that are below the x-axis. This greenish color is actually a combination of home usage, the blue, and solar production, the yellow. So you can actually see that while we are producing solar energy, our home is actually directly using that. It's not being pushed to the grid. So it's kind of nice to be self-powered. All of this green part of the chart would generally be our self-powered part of the day. The second image here on the right is what you would see if you scroll down a little bit lower below this graph and you actually see the hard numbers here so for the winter solstice my home used during the whole 24 hour period 14.1 kilowatt hours I produced 11 kilowatt hours I drew from the grid 10.2 kilowatt hours and I pushed to the grid 7.1 kilowatt hours and I have a lot of that drawn out here on the right hand side so We'll go from top to bottom again. I produced 11 kilowatt hours on the winter solstice, which actually was pretty good, but it wasn't enough to satisfy what my home needed for the entire day. We are in the winter months, so we are using heat. We have some electric heat. We also have our furnace running, and we have some lights on, obviously, in the evening hours. Um, so it's really nice is during the warmer months seeing that you can produce more than what your home uses, but obviously here in the cooler months, it's kind of tough to do that. So in order to power my home when the sun is down, I, may, I have to draw from the grid. And again, these are credits that I've already pushed into the grid. So they're really not costing me anything at all. And then whatever is overproduced is pushed to the grid during the daylight hours as well. So it's nice to see that even in this shortest day of the year, we are able to push some energy back into the grid. We'll generate those as credits moving forward, but also others within our electric network can be using that energy as well. I talked about the kilowatt hour rule of thumb in my July 2020 video, so check that out if you haven't seen it for more information. 
This would be the expected production that you would see uh, on the low end and high end for the months of November through January under a day of full sun. So you would expect to see at least 7.56, basically one times the size of my system, up to three times the size of my system, 22.68 kilowatts. So I'm glad to be able to actually end up with a, a day where I was able to produce enough electricity to fit right within that kilowatt hour rule of thumb. The low temperature for the day, 34 degrees in the morning, and we reached 44 during the early afternoon. As you saw earlier, that we did have some overcast skies and fog through the first half of the day, and then we turned mo mostly cloudy to partly cloudy. That is evident here on the yellow portion of the solar production graph. You can see that for the first half of the day, from about 8 to noon, it was rather low here. We were only producing around 1 to 1.5 1 kilowatts. And then once we started to break out of the clouds and fog, our production shot up above two and actually we had a peak right around four kilowatts here uh, right around uh, probably one or two p.m. before it fall sharply falling back uh, as the sun started to set later on in the day so here on the shortest day of the year we only had about 9.5 hours of daylight it's not sunlight because we were cloudy but 9.5 hours of daylight solar noon occurred at 12.07 p.m. and our max solar elevation was only 27 degrees so I want to give you guys a quick promo for my next video coming up. This is my Tesla Solar Seasonal Series. I'm going to be sharing with you my Autumn 2020 solar production data, and those are going to cover the months of October, November, and December. And those align generally with the astronomical autumn season. Definitely smash that subscribe button if you're really loving our content. If you like our solar content, that's great. I also do a bit of content on my Tesla Model 3, hoping to do some full self-driving beta videos coming up as well when that's released to me. I also have videos planned on supercharger visits and on my electric motorcycle, my Zero FXS. So again, it really helps our channel to hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.